And so what kind of business is this? Tell us how your business is set up. Is it an LLC? So limited liability company, I'm gonna say no. And I'm just gonna pick sole proprietorship, partnership, nonprofit, S Corp. You would think that these different uh, settings would have a different setting on the chart of accounts that's being given because they would have an impact you would think on the equity section in the chart of accounts but i don't think they even do because quickbooks gives you this massive chart of accounts no matter what the options you put into many of these items uh and so i think this again is possibly more for internal uh purposes for intuit to manage their data so what's your industry start by typing the selection of the selected industry and I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to say construction for this one, construction, industrial building, and we'll say other construction, uh, material merchant. I want to choose something that has basically inventory in it. Again, you would think that this indication would have some impact primarily on the creation of the generic chart of accounts that they give you. But I don't think it really does because I think they give a massive chart of account that's basically trying to encompass a bunch of different type of company files. That's different than the desktop version, which actually does change the chart of accounts, you know, based on the industry that uh, that you are choosing. So what can so again, I think it's more for personal information with the online version here so what's your main role so we can be the owner employee bookkeeper i'm going to say owner for our purposes and go next uh is test your main source of income we use this info to get you started so again i'm, I'm going to say uh no but this doesn't look like it's going to have an impact on the company file this looks like more personal informa information that quickbooks is trying to accumulate so which of these best describes I own and run the business, I do freelance, I do demand gig work, something else. Again, will this have an impact on the on the chart of accounts or anything that the company file is being created? I have my I don't think so. Yeah, I think this is personal information that QuickBooks wants to gather. So I'm going to say next, uh, who works at this business? So I fly solo employees, contractors, other partners, I plan to hire. Now, you would think that if you chose employees, for example, then you would have payroll set up and it might try to upsell you for payroll or contractors. We would need the 1099 forms in order to process the the, the uh, tax returns and whatnot. But w will these items necessarily set up payroll or set up the 1099s or something like that? No, it's giving information, I believe, to QuickBooks so that they can have that for their data analysis as well as possibly try to upsell you on the <laughs> payroll possibly and stuff like that. So I'm gonna say next. And uh, does a bookkeeper help you with your books? If so, we can connect them to your account. So if you have a bookkeeper that, that helps, then of course it would be nice to give them access to the QuickBooks file. So I'm gonna say no here. And they, then they say, we could find you a bookkeeper. <laughs> what apps do you use for your business? So if we have other, if we're using these apps more and more, the online version is becoming nice because you might be able to connect it to some of these apps, but I'm not going to connect any apps now. If you have apps you need to connect to, then it is something that you can do at a later time. So you don't have to say, well, if I don't connect the app, then it's all going to fall apart. I won't be able to do it later. No, you can typically do it later. I'm going to skip it for now. And what do you want to do to do in QuickBooks? So I'm going to accept payments get business bank track receive expenses track time track sales send stuff manage and pay bills create estimates possibly manage inventory manage sales tax track miles maybe not that one but those are the items if i don't check these off will i lose the capacity to do those options in quickbooks i don't think so does it have an impact on how quickbooks is going to set up i don't think so except for possibly like a an intro like sheet that tells you kind of <laughs> what to do it does in other words i don't think it's going to change the chart of accounts or most of those setup i think it's more for internal purposes is for intuit's uh, data analysis so i'm going to say next and what uh, should you do first here are a few ways you can help you get started so get ready to invoice track receipt and expenses 
So I'm going to say that we'll pick get ready to invoice next. Okay, uh, start getting paid with invoices. So we'll help you get started fast and, and look good doing it. So one, give your invoice uh, a template touch. So invoices can be used as a data input form, but they also, of course, could be customized for your invoicing process. We're not going to dive into that now. Two, send your sample invoice to see what your customers see. Three, set up online payments to let customers pay you on the spot. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that at this point because that is something that I can do at a later time and that's not where our focus is. Invoice from anywhere and get paid faster. So get the free QuickBooks mobile app with your subscription. See real-time alerts, download QuickBooks mobile app. So this is another way that you can basically set up your payment options uh, with QuickBooks. That's not our point of focus now. So I'm going to say next on that and you're on your way it says pooling your information personalizing your setup building your checklist great all right so it's we're set up welcome to quickbooks let's show you around and so on you can take the tour i'm not going to do that i'm going to close this out and then they've got your checklist here so this is all that data input that you put in kind of helps you to, it gives you basically a checklist to go to go over here and that's the main thing it's basically giving you. So in my opinion, it kind of looks like QuickBooks wants to gather data and, and then, and then, you know, kind of make a thing that acts like the data is actually being used for your help with checklist, but it's not really adjusting most of the files, meaning like it's not really adjusting the chart of accounts and stuff that we'll take a look at. So I'm not going to uh, dive into the checklist and any uh, detail here. So I'm going to, uh, close the checklist. I'm going to say uh, close the checklist. So done with that. And then the major navigation fields here are on the left. We've got, of course, our uh, information on the left. This is where we'll typically go when we want to enter new data or review data. We can go to the new button. This is where the we have the forms to enter data. And then we can go into the sections over here, which I would categorize by cycle or by vendors, customers, and uh, employees, vendor section, customer section, employee section, tracking data for who we buy stuff from, who we get money from, customers and employees. And then our settings and stuff are over here under the cog. Now, also note there's two main views that QuickBooks has been testing out for some time. There's the business view and the accountant view. When you first set up a company file, it puts it in a business view, which is less professional 